let's get into cryotherapy. Big, big, big money coming up. People are going to cryotherapy facilities, getting cryotherapy, doing everything they need to do so they can heal. Nowhere in research has it ever been shown that ice makes you heal. Ice can do one thing and one thing only. Make it cold for you. Well, what does your body do with cold? What it does with cold is it restricts blood flow. Anytime you walk outside and it's cold, your body instantly says, that's cold, let's close down the blood vessels so we don't lose all of our warm-blooded heat. So you get vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction is where your blood vessels close down and limit the amount of blood that goes through the skin in the local areas. Now, why do we always ice our injuries? Because the body's normal response is to over-respond and swell too much. So we want to limit that. Ice right after an injury combined with elevation, compression, a little bit of rest will help reduce the amount of swelling and inflammation you get. Which is good because if the body's response is always to overreact, I don't need that much swelling to cause healing. However, after that vasoconstriction is done in the immediate sense, meaning within a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, your body now needs to increase blood flow to the area to cause healing. See, we say, oh, I need to ice and compression therapy and all these great things so I can heal. No, you use them to limit the amount of inflammation and swelling and scar tissue you create in the first place. Then it makes it easier to heal afterwards. Think of patching a hole in the wall with spackle. You show up to a hole in the wall, you take a big blob of spackle and you cover up the hole. Great, the hole's covered, but that is not healed. In fact, no construction or carpenter would allow you to do that and say, we're good, we can leave now. Well, don't do that to your body. Yes, you need to cover the hole, so you need to do something to limit that over response. So ice is like limiting how much you put on the wall in the first place. Or it's like taking the putty knife and scraping off the excess. Great. Now I look a lot better, a lot less to work through later. But if you zoom in real close, you'll see that eh, the hole kind of puckered in as it dried, so it's not perfectly smooth, and there's a little bit left over on the outside edges that has to be gotten rid of. And it's certainly not painted the right color. That's the healing process. So doing ice, compression, elevation, all those things, it does nothing for your healing. In fact, if you don't use it in the first couple of minutes, it's not really going to do much at all. Other than cool off the nerves, which will slow down a pain response, which will limit future swelling. So it could be used for that sense. But these giant tanks that do cryotherapy, they're more harm than good if you're not around someone who knows what they're doing. But again, if you don't have an acute injury, why do you need a whole body cryotherapy? Well, what is it doing? What are your goals? Why are you using this therapeutic tool? Well, if cryotherapy is only good at limiting how much swelling you get, using it after a workout is good to prevent the overswelling. But using it on a regular basis, it's not going to help you to heal. It's not going to help you recover. You need blood flow. Well, what is it doing? Well, in getting that cold in your entire body, you are shunting the blood away from the skin and towards your organs. Now, that might be good if you need the organs to flush it out, clean it out, and get it back out there. But what are you risking? You're risking hypothermia. You're looking skin rashes and irritations. You're looking at doing things to the body that are way extreme. And the body has ways of fighting that off. Just like if you put an ice pack on for two, three minutes, it cools you off. But if you put it on for 20 minutes, your body says, I'm going to get hypothermia and die. I need to warm this up. In which case, you get the exact opposite response that you were hoping for. So if you're going to use cryotherapy, use it. But what are your goals for using it? If you want to use it because in cooling the body off, my body now has to heat back up and therefore I'm going to burn calories and turn on my brown fat, then go ahead and do that. 
but make sure your hands and feet are covered, your ears are covered, your nose is covered. Surprisingly, your nipples are covered because those areas are way too sensitive for the amount of cold you're going to be exposed to. Can you jump in a cold water bath? Sure, but no cold water bath is minus 200 degrees. Your body was never meant for that. That's an absolute zero scale. Now, cold water is 30, 40 degrees. Not so great, but not extreme. With extreme cold comes extreme risk. Do you want to take that risk for the reward? Well, according to the research, the reward says you're going to freeze your body. You're going to shunt the blood to the organs but you're not going to help your muscles recover or heal in any way, shape, or form because you took all the blood away from those areas. Why do you heal then? Why do you feel better? Well, your body at a minus 200 degrees thinks you're going to die and again releases endorphins. So you feel better in spite of what you did, not because of what you did. Hyperbaric oxygen feeds the body what it was designed to have oxygen, increasing blood flow to the areas of damage, increasing oxygen to the areas of damage, increasing infrared light, direct exposure to it, not the infrared sauna. Infrared saunas give you heat, but do not expose you to the actual infrared light energy. So infrared light provides your skin with the sparks and energy from the sun that help the electron transport chain. The oxygen helps the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. Both of those things are necessary components in every cell of the body to do the work that they do, which is to heal. So you could use all these adjunct therapies and tools and devices. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't use them. I'm saying use them wisely. Use them correctly so that you can have the results that you're looking for. If you want to heal a wound Give it oxygen first. Make it heal. Then if you find that you have adhesions, scar tissue, or any kind of other things that need repair, then you can assist the body with things like suction cups, Graston tools, massage guns, hot therapies, cold therapies. They're all good and good to use. They make you feel good, but they don't cause healing. You get better in spite of them a lot of times. If, especially if they're used incorrectly. So if you have any questions, we have all those tools here at Integrated Hyperbarics. We use all those tools here at Integrated Hyperbarics. But quite honestly, when we use them, people say, wow, nobody ever did it like that before. And you feel much better, much quicker because they're applied appropriately. So if you have any questions, come in and check it out or give us a call, send us an email. Whatever your questions are, let me know. Because here at Integrated Hyperbarics, what we want is for you to have the tools to get yourself better and to answer any of your questions from a research standpoint. Let's see if we can use the body the way it was designed to be used to get better faster.